So let me uh, put this simulation on something that's going to illustrate uh, periodic standing wave, uh, sorry, per periodic traveling wave. Can I? All right, all right. I, I think that's good enough. Okay, so all this is sort of going off to that end and not doing anything. So what you are seeing here, so this is traveling wave. Everything here is traveling from left to right, and it's uh, periodic because the source is rotating at a constant rate, so it's shaking this at a constant rate up and down, up and down. You could do, another thing you could do also imagine happening physically is if you imagine that this end is attached to a kind of a mass on a spring, and imagine that this mass on a spring, oh, I'm, yeah, those who pits on that. But imagine this mass on a spring is uh, oscillating up and down at the natural oscillation frequency. That's how you do get something that looks like, um, something that looks like a periodic traveling wave. So what I would like to be able to do is write down a, a mathematical expression for this traveling periodic wave. And I'm going to be using that mathematical expression to show you a couple interesting features of waves that, uh, um, that's not trivial to get at, and it's interesting. Um, so let me freeze this here. All right. So yes? Yeah, so this is a transverse wave because the wave is traveling from left to right, but the shaking or the displacement is up and down. It's perpendicular. Right. If you uh, set it to pulse on the left upper Pulse? Yeah. Oh, oh, I see. Also a transverse wave? Yeah, that's also transverse because once again, the direction of wave propagation is from left to right, but the displacement of any portion of the medium is uh, up and down. Yeah. So in fact, this simulation can only illustrate, I'm just going to close the blinds. Uh, this simulation can only uh, illustrate transverse wave. I don't have a simulation that will illustrate a longitudinal wave. Yeah, I, um, just, that, that's why I wanted to mention that so that you realize that <laughs> longitudinal waves do exist. But because, of the, because it's easier to visualize transverse wave, we are going to almost exclusively use transverse waves to talk about mathematics of wave. OK, so let me go back to the oscillation. So you know the dis distinction between transverse and longitudinal, it's not whether it's a periodic or not. It always has to do with what is the direction of displacement. What is the direction that the things are being displaced from equilibrium? So OK, let's say we have a, oscillatory thing, so we have a periodic wave. So this is the first question I want to address. Uh, what, kind of, yeah, what kind of mathematical expression will describe this, um, will describe this traveling wave? Yes? So it has a sign shape, right? So we can use that at least as a starting point. So one thing that we can say is, well, let's say this is, a, this is the wave at time equals 0. Then we can say this. At time equals 0, this is what the wave looks like. It goes on forever. So we can say, all right, this uh, height, um, the height of the bead as a function of the position of the bead, x, at time equals 0 is something that's described by sine, sine of x. Um, when we did the waves, do you remember what we, um, so I think we did this when we went through a wave. Like what I wrote down here, it's not quite correct. There are two things wrong with it. Do people remember, remember that from waves? Yes. What am I mainly looking for when I'm trying to figure out what's wrong with this expression? Yeah, units is the biggest thing. So because in order to make the units come out right, I need to have a constant here um, so that the argument to sign is unitless. And I need to have another constant here um, so that the unit on the right hand side matches this unit here. And let me give you the, this constant in the standard form. 
that you are going to see it. It's uh, this constant here is k. And uh, you, we have a name for this constant. So let me write it down under the list of terminology that you should know. So that k there is referred to as wave number. Don't ask me why it's called wave number. That's just the name for it. And that's uh, what's represented by that constant k over there. And it's going to be related to something else that we are going to define in a little bit, something called wavelength. So wave number and wavelength are related to each other, and we'll talk about this in a little bit. Yeah? And, uh, oh, and we need one more constant here. That's the amplitude that we have already been talking about. So this function will work for describing wave at time equals zero. It works for a snapshot picture, but we, want, we need to be able to describe the wave as a function of time as well. So using this as a starting point, how should we modify it so that we have a function as a function of time that will describe the movement of this wave for all time. Like if I, if I let time flow, uh, what happens to this uh, shape of wave? Like what, what kind of uh, mathematical transformation would you describe this, uh, this with? Stephen? It's moving. There's a particular term that you have seen in either geometry or algebra. Remember, we are dealing with a function, and we are trying to describe a transformation that's happening to a function. A velocity is not a transformation, right? Sorry, what? Change of an angle. I think we are trying to describe change in phase. So uh, that, that might work if you're trying to pick a single point and look at that. but. Um, I want to connect it to something that we were doing last time, something that we were doing last uh, Thursday. Yes, Asia? Yeah, linear translation. You have this uh, shape, a plot of something, and over some time, this is moving across. We call that translation, or linear translation. So, so this is one way we can get at what this time should be. Um, this uh, function of position and time, it's something that's going to describe this shape that's being translated across space over time. So what we need to have here, so the way I should modify what's written here is where I see x, I should replace this with x minus vt. That's what you do for translation, right? Yes? And this is what we did the last time, too. So in fact, what you see here, um, so now it's a function of time, not uh, at time equals zero. So this is uh, exactly in the form that we are describing before as the general solution to the wave equation. Um, in this case, we are giving the form of this function g that it's sine. 